Behind me, you can see blowing grass in the wind. You may think that we're out in a field, but we're actually on top of a skyscraper in a quickly growing city. Today, we're going to talk about sustainable growth in cities and how we make smart cities for the future. I'm Mr. Coulter, and this is Human Geography. Today we're going to take on a topic that we've talked about in many different units, which is urban sustainability. This is 6.8 in our study of cities. So sustainability, as we've talked about in earlier units, is the, the goal of sustainability is to meet the needs of people now without stopping further generations from being able to do the same thing for themselves. In urban areas, people are innovating new ways to meet sustainable goals as population grows and more people use those resources. So let's look at a sustainable city and plans for the future people have. Smart planning, which are green and climate neutral cities, is a great way to try to think about this. One example of an amazing smart building is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It is one that collects its own rainwater. They have gardens that use that rainwater in order to grow food that is actually used in the stadium. It has a lot of external windows that take in light, which mean that they don't have to operate lights and take energy during the day. It also has vents that can open up to get an outside breeze instead of paying for air conditioning for that whole city. And opening the roof helps regulate the climate in order to be similar to what's going on outside. We also see regenerative and prosperous urban economies. And whenever those are used to put money back into the growth of the city, that's a sustainable way to grow. Also connecting healthy and climate friendly lifestyles like bike paths, walking areas, and people using less transit is a great way to keep a city sustainable. And empowering communities of all different backgrounds, helping them to have equal access to the resources of the city, and engaging the community members in order to make the city a better place, all helps keep us more sustainable moving forward. One way that we make this possible is through urban planning. Urban planning is where we think about the problems in our cities and we actively try to solve them using smart growth. We have famous planned cities around the world that were built before people moved into them. Canterbury in Australia, Brasilia in Brazil, Washington DC, Irvine, California, Seaside, Florida, and Poundbury, England are all examples of planned cities. We know that Brasilia and Washington DC were both forward thrust capitals that were built in order to be well planned out ahead of time. And Seaside, Florida is a special type of building that we will talk about that some of you may have actually been to. Here we can see Canabera and obviously the plans of it were laid out well in advance of people occupying it because it gave them a unique design. Those kind of smart cities use smart growth. That means that they are pedestrian friendly. They are built to increase the density to medium housing or high density. And it is important to mix ethnic and income groups so that you don't create pockets of different income groups or ethnic conflict. Here we can see in Canabera some of the smart building practices that they took on. Here you can see some of the beautiful things that you do with smart planning. So zoning practices are at the heart of what people do with sustainable living. The way that cities and countries zone land can make a city more livable or encourage sprawl. And remember, sprawl is what we are trying to avoid. Because sprawl takes over our farmland and green space and replaces it with spread out suburbs. Mixed land use is important as we look at urban areas. So mixing residential and commercial properties, that encourages people to walk more and develop a sense of community. The more that you're out walking in a public space, the more you want to do your best to keep it up to code and up to standards that you want to live in. And that's why zoning laws that create sidewalks of a certain size help make spaces stay more connected. That is walkability, where you try to create spaces where people walk around more. You also want transportation-oriented development. 
So growth around easy to use mass transit helps people get to work with shorter commutes and the use of fewer cars. So that helps people to get to their jobs easier and be more productive members of the economic society. Also keeping smart growth policies, limiting sprawl, keeps people close to work in the lives of their community where they get to know the people around them so they all try to protect it together. A great example of this is Pont City Market. If you've ever been to Pont City Market, you may have noticed that it doesn't look like a normal modern building. That's because it was the headquarters for Sears for many years. When Sears shut it down, it was left as an abandoned building in a part of town that was decaying. I'm not exaggerating, the Kroger that was always next to the Sears building was known as Murder Kroger because of how dangerous the area was. That is completely turned around because of two development projects. One is the Beltline, which we'll talk about a lot more, and the other is Pont City Market. They bought and redesigned this building into a modern, smart building. They turned old offices into condos and apartments, and they turned the main floor that used to be the Sears commercial area into shopping and restaurants. So we can see the bottom floor that used to be a Sears still has the internal structure that supported the building. It's exposed with nice restaurants, lots of shopping, and places to try out new foods. It also has vintage apartments with exposed brick that give a sense of the old building and connection to old Atlanta while also offering people residential areas. And it has spaces for play on top. There's this whole play area with putt-putt and all of these different things that create a fun environment for people to look out over the Atlanta landscape. So Pond City is one great example of how we can take things that have fallen apart in a city and refurbish it to grow smarter inside of where we've already developed. That takes us to the concept of new urbanism. To try to combat against urban sprawl, some developers and towns have taken on an idea named new urbanism. It's the creation of new urban neighborhoods with the goal of these things that we've talked about. Walkability, mixed land use and public space, and many aim to have a smaller environmental impact. These new towns are planned from the beginning, much like forward thrust capitals, and built with city centers. The first of its kind was Seaside, Florida. If you've been to Seaside, Florida in 30A, you may notice that there's a very particular look to it. It's because it was planned around the central area from the beginning. They've even filmed movies at Seaside, Florida, but it was the first development of its kind where it was a walkable downtown where people could ride bikes and go see the water. Celebration Florida outside of Disney World is another example of this. This was a vision that Walt Disney had to build a town with a central area with less cars. We also see Laguna West in California based around these harbors, based around the focus of being on the water. So people's parking is on the back, but the front of their houses are facing out towards the water. Kentland in Maryland is another great example of a walkable town. In Harbortown, Tennessee, where the pyramid that we have definitely talked about before is the Bass Pro Shop in Memphis. It's across the street from that, but it's based around the harbor in Memphis, Tennessee. There's a lot of praise for this kind of smart urban design. We like the walkability of creating connected spaces that people can walk and bike on instead of drive. Here's the Beltline where people get out on weekends to go explore the city in a new way. Mixed housing is great because it gives different socioeconomic classes types of housing that improve the quality of life for everyone. It allows people to have access to resources that they might not if a poor part of town is completely divided from the wealthy class. Access to mass transit is important because it encourages people to share commute and reduce travel time. It also reduces traffic and pollution. 
And reducing sprawl is important because building more houses in dense area reduces the sprawl of cities out into farming and it creates less driving and air pollution. And sustainable planning, like including things like solar panels or wind farms, includes sustainable practices in their initial design. Sustainable planning helps us to plan for a future where we get our energy from other sources. Things like solar panel parking lots that shade the cars so they don't get hot throughout the day or rained or snowed on, and then also take in sunlight and store it to provide energy to surrounding buildings. But there are some criticisms for this urban design. Some think that this new urbanism is a hidden suburbanism, that we're spreading out and creating sprawl just with better planning. That we're building big developments instead of nature in order to create a better looking type of suburbs. Other people have complained that new urban towns are much more expensive than anywhere else in the United States. When these numbers were found in 2019, the medium home cost in Celebration, Florida was almost $400,000 versus the Florida average of $237,000. So it was more than $150,000 more to live in this urban town rather than most of Florida. It also can lead to de facto segregation where you have a high cost of housing that segregates out any other social class. And it drives a historic loss of character and sense of place because if you're creating these ready-made towns similar to Avalon, it doesn't give you the historic sense of place. But still, there are efforts to try to make a better way of living that spreads out less than before. So we will weigh the costs and benefits of these new projects like new urbanism and think about the other types of projects that can benefit a city. Understanding that building more sustainably and trying to infill with sustainable ideas helps us to have cities that will last in the next generations and keep our world a better place. Learning about urban sustainability is just one step in better understanding our world. I'm Mr. Coulter and this was Human Geography.